Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're wondering, who is that? Well, my name is Emma Jean. Hi, if you're new, welcome to my channel. And I'm currently an x-ray student. Um, I'm going to go over a simulation of barium enema, also known as BE. I did recently just post a video about another fluoro study or fluoroscopy, which are live images of the esophagram and upper GI. And I'll link it up here. Yeah, it'd be this one. I'm always mixed up if it's this one or this side. For sure, it's gonna be on this side, so go ahead and check that out. This one is going to be also using barium as the contrast. It is the preferred one that's always used. Again, if the patient happens to be allergic of some sort, another contrast can be used. And I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. Hi, my name is Emma Jean. I'll be your x-ray tech for today. I do have a gown for you. Go ahead and change into this and remove any jewelry or metal that you have in the region that we're looking at today. It will be at your large intestine area, so anything in your stomach region region and down. Just remove and change into this gown and I'll meet you right back in this room. Perfect, you're all set. Can you state your first last name and date of birth, please? Any chance of pregnancy? Any allergies that I should know about? Any surgeries or surgery in the region that we're looking at? And when was the last time you ate? What brought you here today? Your doctor ordered you a barium enema study, which is also known as BE. Um, this will be done with the, assist the assistance of the radiologist in the room. We will be using this enema tip and it'll be inserted about one inch in. It'll be causing a little bit of discomfort. We will then inflate a balloon inside. And what this does is helps for the enema tip to be secure inside your rectum. We will then introduce barium, which is a contrast of a white color. It will help coat the outline of your large intestine. We will then introduce air and that will also help with the coating of your large intestine. We may have you be sitting down or laying down and be in different positions while we do take live x-ray pictures, which is called fluoroscopy. Again, this will be with the assistance with the radiologist in the room with us. This can, exam can take about 20 to 25 minutes. Up to your pace, it may take a little longer or a little quicker. And if by any time that you do feel that you want to stop the exam, you can always let us know for that as well. When we are done with the exam to help flush the contrast out, drink lots and lots of water. So don't be alarmed if you do see your stool to be a white or a grayish color, as this is normal for about 48 to 72 hours. It will help for that to flush out with drinking lots of fluids. Your doctor will be getting the results for this exam. If for some reason you haven't heard from them, feel free to reach out to them. I can always give you the information of who the doctor's office is as well as their phone number. All right, do you have any questions for me? All right, so that was a demonstration of the BE when a patient is in the room, um, helping them to change, helping them to explain the procedure and for aftercare. Crucial points, key points for at least me, for me to get the full points that I did for my simulation is to introduce yourself. State your name, state your x-ray tag, just so the patient knows who you are. Also, ask the patient to change into a gown, remove any jewelry or clothing, what? <laughs> to remove any jewelry or metal in that region because if the patient does go through these images and they have metal in the body, not only does it cause more exposure because they have to be retaken, but it will also cause delay in the exam because the patient will then have to go back to the changing room or remove that and get that done. And then it just delays the whole process. So just let them know to remove any of that so that it doesn't, so that it doesn't delay the exam or cause them more exposure. Always important to ask for a chance of pregnancy if it is a woman patient. Ask for any known allergies as there is a chance that they might be actually allergic to the contrast itself. If that's the case, an alternative contrast will be used. Ask if there's any surgeries done. Um, if you wanna be more specific, you can ask if there's any surgeries done in that region, in the large intestine area. Maybe they have a tear in their rectum. Those are all things that would be nice to know or would be good to know because we don't want to have the chance of proliferation to occur. In that case, another contrast will have to be used. Optional, but I like to always ask the patient what brought them here for them to better explain the situation. And maybe they do have an idea of um, the relation of the exam that they're having to the concerns or issues that they've been having. Always explain what the procedure is. So barium, which is the contrast and enema, which is going to be a tip. I'll insert a picture on the side here just so you can see what it looks like. But there are three different kinds of bariums that I learned about. The first one is a disposable one. The second one is a rectal retention. And the third one is air contrast retention. The third one is the one that will be relatable to the exam that I explained 
the patient because it is a double contrast study, meaning that there is two contrasts, which is barium being used as well as air. So for this particular exam, we will be using the third type of enema, which will be the air contrast retention one. Also great to explain about the balloon, especially because the patient can definitely feel this. I feel like this might be a part of the exam, either inserting it or the balloon part where the patient might start to feel really, really huge discomfort or maybe just feel even embarrassed because it is invasion of their space, of their privacy. So it's really important to know to be as compassionate as possible, to make sure that they do feel comfortable and to also make sure that if they have any questions to thoroughly answer it for them. Then after explain the second contrast being used, which will be air and that we will be rolling them in different positions. These will all be laying down because they will be in a sims position this is not really explained to the patient because not all patients will know what a sims position is but we will rather guide them into that position so that it will help better guide the insertion of the enema into their rectum let them know how long the exam can take and that it can take longer or a shorter time depending on their pace and that we will work with their pace. Their stool may be that color of the contrast or a grayish color, so that's good to explain to them as well and to help flush it out of their system and drink plenty and plenty of water. This is done with every exam, but always, always tell the patient that the results will go to the doctor who referred it. If they do not know, it is good to let them know because what can happen is they may contact us and we are not the point of contact for the results. They do have to get it from the doctor who referred the order. I did mention this already as well, but questions always leave the ending for them to ask any questions they may have because they may feel overwhelmed, they may feel scared, and they may feel embarrassed as well. So just show your compassion for them and show that you are there for them. And this is a way to help better diagnose of an issue that they may ha be having with their large intestine. Okay, I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this educational and very helpful. If there are things that you say for your clinical site or for your simulation, let me know. I do know that it just depends with school. This is what I'm required to say. When it comes to going to clinics, it might also be different. The protocol might be different. When it comes to NPO or asking the patient about how long they ate, this is just a way to let us know that they did not eat before the exam because they do need to be clean. So if the patient does say that they had a cheeseburger last night, probably can't do the exam and it has to be rescheduled. They do need to be on an empty stomach. Every place is different when it comes to how long they need to be NPO for or nothing by mouth. My simulation were not strict about how many hours it should be, more strict about just letting the patient know or asking them to make sure that they did not eat. Some places may vary for having NPO to be eight hours, six hours, 12 hours, maybe even 24 hours. Again, it just really depends on your clinic or your hospital for what their protocol is for NPO. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.